I'm going to overview our project on uh, HIV CAR T cells. Um, I will say that uh, Juno is helping us, and I'm a co-founder of Juno, so there is a disclosure there. Um, I want to make a few comments on what I think are really the challenges that, that are faced, and I think there are sort of uh, considerable challenges with respect to the spatial dynamics as it relates to between the virus and the host. Um, in that um, cell-to-cell spread is a fact of life, um, and actually in a very nice mathematical model done by the Baltimore Group in 2011, under ART, AR cell-to-cell spread is enhanced. Um, thus, I sort of believe that in a single spatial area, the skirmishes um, may be intermittent, but the chronic activation is sort of telling us in a human appears that there is reactivation, in, in my opinion, probably essentially daily, if, uh, if not hourly, um, that is occurring. And I think the battlefield is, is illustrated by... So my work in, um, in my lab is on tissue resident memory T cells, and we use genital herpes as a model. And we really will, can show you that the spatial interactions between the virus and the host is really what determines reactivation. And um, uh, the difference between controlling something in tissue where HSV is, is reactivating all the time, and I think is what's going on in, a, in HIV, that if a, uh, you can control it, if the, the, if the T cells get there um, within 30 to 60 minutes, if the viral half-life of a viral infected cell goes up to 90 minutes, then you have 10 to the 2 viruses shed. And if it's at 140 minutes, um, it, you actually will have 10 to the 6 viruses shed. So the interactions here are really, not, are, are really in the time period of uh, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, to actually get to get this going. And so the spatial dynamics are important. Um, and it's not just in the lymph nodes, it's also in the tissue. Um, this um, slide is actually a rectal biopsy. Um, it's actually an HIV negative uh, person, but you can again see these lymphoid follicles that are uh, packed with CD4 T cells. Um, and um, this is just an incredible mass of of uh, CD4 T cells um, that are n not in the germinal center but are um, uh, in the interstitial uh, acinar tissues. And we see these um, as we biopsy genital, the genital tract of both women and men. Uh, we see these tertiary lymphoid structures, um, well described by Ashley uh, Haas also in the non-human primate. So we have not just a lymphoid problem, we actually have a, um, a tissue distribution problem throughout the genital tract and probably other areas of the body as it relates to uh, the interactions that occur. So um, HIV infection occurs in focal areas where CD4 T cells are packed together and latently infected cells are in immunologically privileged sites. People have already shown that. HIV spreads to cell, uh, by cell-to-cell -cell infection, and it, infection spreads well before the clinical eclipse phase. So you get extension, you know, within with, uh, essentially very um, intermittently. And the KI between the envelope and, and CD4 is very, very strong. And I think one of the key issues that we have here is that GP, you know, Tony showed 25 years ago, as well as many other groups, that as soon as you, GP120 gets onto the membrane of a, of a, CD, uh, of a, of a CD4 T cell, it, it causes dysfunction as well as a B cell. Um, so one of the, I think, the fundamental issues here is not just killing of HIV-infected CD4 cells, it's their dysfunction. It's changing them from a functional help to IL-10 and other kinds of signaling issues. Um, and, they, and in this milieu um, the, of reactivation, I think dysfunction uh, comes quickly and is profound. So strategies for aborting these localized bursts of HIV reactivation infection require very rapid recognition and a very potent antiviral effect. Now, that's an interesting issue because CAR T cells are probably not as good as recognition as a, uh, as a, you know, as a normal MHC uh, cell, and we'll just have to find out whether their potency for killing overcomes their potential um, uh, less um, potency in, in rapid recognition. I think strategies that are post-HIV entry or don't handle this collateral spread will likely be inefficient, and one, whether one can induce enough collateral damage to effectively eliminate the frequencies of, of bursts is what we're trying to find out. Um, but I do think it's the skirmishes are defined in the microenvironment. Um, and whether we can actually get tissue saturation with an asynchronous infection and just measure release from reactivation as the primary endpoint um, is, a, is an issue I want to raise for the field. I think a lot of the first studies with genetically 
um, modified cells really need to use the technologies of what's happening in the tissue, and that would be a huge success. Um, <clears throat> and then trying to get the saturation effect, I think, is something that would have come later. Now, why consider anti-HIV CAR T cells for HIV cure? Well, first, it has the potential to kill HIV-infected cells that have escaped endogenous immune responses. Um, the targeting viral epitopes minimize the potential for off-target side effects. And our CAR T cells are not phased by MHC downregulation strategies of uh, HIV-1. It can potentially persist for years, and um, there are studies both uh, occurring in oncology as well as the initial studies uh, in, in HIV that suggest so. And it can enter the reservoirs, including the CNS and lymph nodes, although I think we're going to have to modify them from a trafficking point of view, as people have already talked about. Now, Hans-Peter has really talked about the, uh, the basic component of the CAR T-cell. Um, <clears throat> it has a targeting el uh, element. Uh, you can use um, different types of HIV-neutralizing antibodies. Uh, there are other um, bispecific antibodies that Ed Berger has done that uh, protect CD4. Um, the spacer elements, uh, which are the way uh, essentially uh, control the docking between the SCFV uh, and the infected cell, uh, are really important. There's a transmembrane domain. And there is a co-stimulatory domain. The two that are in clinical uh, trials are CD28 and 41BB. They have their advocates and their um, uh, uh, very little data at the moment to objectively look at Things. I'll show you some, some uh, studies that suggest uh, that cytokine killing is, is different between the two of them. We may need to uh, look at both, and there's some posters upstairs from the Penn group that suggest that. And then it has the essential signaling uh, domain. There are second and third generations adding cytokines, et cetera, um, that are um, engineering CAR T cells. When we make a CAR T cell, we actually um, make six different lentiviral vectors. Um, uh, the spacers, uh, we have a small, a middle, middle, and a longer spacer, and there are no rules yet. Uh, they have to be uh, empirically derived with respect to the issue of what um, uh, works best from uh, in vitro killing. It is just um, as Hans-Peter talked to you about. Um, you, uh, it's an autologous, um, uh, usually a lentiviral um, uh, or, or a uh, retroviral. Lentiviral is what we will use um, in which you take um, uh, autologous T cells. Um, I'll show you that we would use purified T cells. So we'll select first for CD3, then uh, select for CD4, and then look uh, for CD8. You can actually do uh, naive selection and, and um, uh, memory cell selection. Um, both of these, I think, are going to be essential for the HIV field um, because I think uh, lowering the dose um, dose is really an important issue with, as it relates to toxicity of CAR T cells. And I think a lot of things we're learning at the moment is, is uh, if you use a defined population, uh, over time you will have less toxicity. Now, there is very impressive data for the CD19 CAR T cell um, in, um, in B cell malignancies. Uh, very high re uh, response rates. Um, uh, just to sort of show you this in a lymphoma patient that has obviously a, um, a huge lymphoma, uh, only uh, two times 10 to the fifth cells per kilogram or only 20 million cells. Uh, that, that's that pellet of cells infused in, uh, and 28 days later you have this very impressive response to a uh, lymphoma. Controlling the replication and understanding the dynamics of the replication um, is one of the key issues here. Um, and our lessons to be learned from the, from the cancer field. This is just sort of gives you a sense that um, essentially the, the more antigen there is, is the higher proliferation. We're actually learning uh, uh, that actually lower doses, uh, if you have a lot of blasts, you actually are better off giving lower doses uh, because of the uh, cytokine release syndromes as well as the neurotoxicity associated with this. The potency of CAR T cells can lead to its side effect, and as we move into, uh, into humans, that's one of the issues that uh, we need to deal with, um, and I think is one of the reasons why I think not only the design of the CAR T cells, but uh, essentially the ex vivo expansion characterization are really going to be critical. I would say that the cytokine release syndrome is, is um, sort of being handled really very well, and you see very few deaths from this now. Um, A, um, learning how to manage it medically, uh, B, giving lower doses. Uh, it's now been reduced to 5 to 10 percent in most of the ALL trials. Uh, mortality is down to 1 to 2 percent. 
what I view as a, an important issue that will um, affect the issue of CAR T cells in HIV are the neurological side effects, which again appear to be dose related. And they are seen in, in some groups from um, anywhere from 10 to 20 percent um, in some um, uh, of persons. Um, what has been gratifying, at least, or optimistic for me in, in, as we pursue this is that there are biomarkers um, th that, are, that are associated with the subsequent development of neurotoxicity, and these are dose-related. So I think as we move towards uh, getting better CAR T cells, we will be able to move this into clinical trials. Now, several groups have constructed anti-HIV CAR T cells that kill autologous viral infected cells in vitro. Uh, methods to gene protect these cells, uh, Hans-Peter has already shown. Uh, An ex vivo killing of latently reactivated T cells has been demonstrated uh, by Taewak Chun, in which he has actually uh, taken um, uh, autologous PBMCs, um, reactivated them um, ex vivo, added um, CAR T cells, and shown that you can um, uh, in vitro kill a uh, latently reactivating virus. Now, first generation CAR T cells uh, were studied over 10 years ago by um, uh, Carl June and um, showed no really great HIV activity, but great safety over time. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we have uh, moved to essentially feel that almost all the CAR T cells that we will make need to gene protect is that you can actually, you know, show that, that uh, you can cause uh, um, um, infection of a CAR T cell uh, without gene protecting it. Uh, you see this in vitro culture uh, with the blue line. Uh, I guess I should use this, of um, first suppression. This is CD19 car against autologous cells. First suppression, and then you start getting um, B24 um, activity. And uh, if you look at these, the, these are uh, dysfunctional. Okay. So second generation key CAR T cells ha have been um, uh, developed. Um, um, you can uh, use them with neutralizing antibody. There's nice uh, data on killing the CAR T cells. Um, I will just say, uh, I think they're, as we move on to these cells, um, how will they traffic? Will they work with low antigen expression? Will they really persist and will resistant emerge? I think we will use defined composition of CAR T cells. Um, central memory cells um, have given longer term persistence in, in leukemia. Naive T cells give higher proliferative capacity. Uh, defined composition of T cells uh, at the moment um, most of the cells uh, studies done at the Hutch use one-to-one -one mixtures of CD4 and CD8 T cells. I would uh, wonder if we were going to need higher CD4 T cells in HIV. Uh, just transfecting PBNCs and shooting whatever you get into the patient, I think, is really not what's going to happen. So um, we will, um, feel that we will uh, need to gain entry to the reservoir site. We'll need a trafficking molecule like CXCR5. We need to be able to recognize and kill early in viral infection, uh, in other words, to find an optimal binding main, um, domain, and to engineer and stay put and to persist, we'll need to um, have functional CD4 help, and I think the only way we're going to do that is with biallelic um, uh, uh, interruption of the, CD, uh, of the CCR5 locus and gene protecting these cells. So I'll end there to say that our uh, initial research focus is to optimize um, the uh, phenotype of genetically protected cells, to test the ability of the protected cells to eradicate ex vivo human proviral reservoir, and to evaluate their engulfment and, tra and tracking. And we have some wonderful technologies now, uh, uh, inside to detection of the cells with transcriptional arrays using laser capture. Um, we have FISH. Uh, this is uh, from our herpes program to actually show that the distance uh, from the viral infected cell is, um, uh, is affected with interferon gamma. So the further away you are from the viral infected cell, um, there's less interferon gamma. So you actually can look in situ, uh, stain for CD4, stain for CD8, and stain for um, interferon gamma RNA. And you actually can see that, that this, is, uh, this can be done. And lastly, uh, single cell sorting um, is available um, that you can actually not only single cell sort and get the uh, T cell receptor, but you actually can mark it with mRNA, and you actually can look at, um, uh, get single cells that a, have um, a variety of mRNA transcripts that you can actually get a molecular marker of what's in the node and or any of the tissue biopsies. And we've been doing this in cervical and skin biopsies in the Hirschby system, 
and you can get clustering of these cells by transcript expression, separating CD4, CD8, CAR T cells um, marked and non-marked by their RNA expression. So the tools to actually do this in humans um, need, uh, have, been over, uh, have been developed, and I think we will be able to t bring these tools, and we'll have to learn both in the non-human primate model and we hope eventually into humans uh, as we bring this technology forward. Thanks.